Welcome to PSY 400, Biological Psychology. My name is Bruce Porter, and I'll be your guide for this course. For generations, people have been interested in the workings of their own mind. This interest has found expression in disciplines as diverse as philosophy, medicine, and psychology. Today, neuroscience addresses the mind as arising from the brain, a biological organ. Brains mediate our daily experience at every level, from breathing and sleeping to making decisions, loving and learning. Neuroscience is starting to provide explanations for every aspect of behavior. Tens of thousands of neuroscientists now examine brain function at levels ranging from molecules to cells to circuits to the whole brain. Although neuroscience is often taught in terms of disease, this is a very limited view. We are our brains in our every action. Understanding the brain can illuminate our daily lives and what it means to be an individual person. The brain is an ever-changing biological organ. Popular belief has it that the brain is like a computer. The brain processes information, but beyond that, the analogy does not hold up well. Everyday experiences reveal ways in which your brains operate in a most uncomputer-like fashion. Examples include visual illusions, the emotional basis of decision-making, irrational approaches to problem-solving, and the unreliability of human memory. These phenomena reflect the evolutionary history of the brain, which has been op optimized by natural selection to help you live to fight another day and to reproduce. Even the unusual capacities, such as humor and mathematics, are reflected by similar capacities in other animals. A brain's entire activity consumes only about as much energy as an idling laptop. Brain cells make trillions of connections with one another. Some connections come from the external world bringing in coded signals that drastically condense the avail available information. These signals are reconstituted by mechanisms in the brain, but never with absolute certainty. The brain changes throughout life. Many changes are pre-programmed in early development, which proceed normally, except in cases of flawed generic inheritance or sebe a severe deprivation. The interplay of genes, environment, and experience continues throughout life. From childhood to old age, active use of skills plays a major role in maintaining and enhancing function. As a biological organ, the brain is vul vulnerable to cardiovascular disease and is kept healthy by physical exercise, which helps the brain retain function and can alleviate the symptoms of anxiety and depression. A second type of change in the brain that depends on experience is memory. The brain's many forms of memory each use different brain regions. The capacity to remember facts relies on the medial temporal lobe system for memory, which also handles spatial navigation. Many memory tricks rely on this commonality. Memory is fluid. Information that seems to f be permanently stored undergoes constant change as memories are reprocessed and consolidated so that a decades old memory may be vivid yet lack detail or context. Our brains react to extreme experiences with a stress response which temporarily conserves resources but persistent stress can have an unhealthy effect on the growth and birth of neurons. Modern life includes work a source of chronic stress, but also play, which triggers short-term responses, such as the secretion of adrenaline, but without creating long-term stress burden. The brain typically represents the body in a seamless fashion, but exceptional events can occur. Pain can even be felt in an extremity after it has been amputated, a syndrome that is caused by lingering representation in the brain. Under extreme conditions, people often report incredible events, such as out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences. Paranormal events may be caused by seizures, 
or an injury to the temporal parietal junction, a site where the body image is represented. Humans have found ways to alter brain's functions chemically. Mind-altering drugs as diverse as uh, nicotine, Prozac, morphine, caffeine. Both legal and illegal drugs work by enhancing or interfering with the function of protein molecules that process neurotransmitter signals. Receptors for a particular neurotransmitter can often be found all over the brain, leading to side effects, sometimes catastrophic ones, such as addiction. Brain variations establish our individual characteristics. Some differences are small, such as those between men and women, who differ mostly in sexual behavior, not cognitive ability. Human variation in personality and cognitive capacity is built on genetic foundations. Therefore, we share many such traits with our parents. Differences in cognitive ability are also seen across generations, a period during which the environment's influence on developments change tremendously. Humans are intensely social animals and are able to imagine the mental states of others. This capacity provides a key component for many group dynamics, including religious belief. One component of this theory of mind capacity may reside in the insula, which is active in processing both one's own emotional state and that of others, and perhaps provides a means for feeling sympathy for others. Insight into the theory of mind may come from autism, a genetically based developmental disorder in which social reasoning is impaired. Some areas of mental functioning are only beginning to be probed. One example is the basis of happiness. Because our ability to adapt to changing circumstances, major life events including blindness and loss of a limb do not affect long-term happiness. Yet other life events have a lasting effect on ha happiness, such as gaining a life partner or losing one. An exciting frontier is the understanding of both happiness and mood, which are profoundly affected by regions in the brain. These questions present a major, major challenge for neuroscience and its relation to everyday life. Fundamentally, this course is about everyday life. In this course, we will talk about our thoughts, mental health, and how we live our lives. Neuroscience is often taught in terms of disease, but this is not the only way of looking at brain function. We use our brains in every action, whether we're aware of it or not. In this course, we will examine brain activity and brain mechanisms underlying all sorts of everyday phenomena. We will try to understand why the brain does tricky things, all in the interest of keeping us alive. We will explore how brains generate behavior and how we create our daily experiences. This course will look at different approaches to help us understand the brain and ourselves a little bit better. We will also look at medical disorders, but the primary focus will be on everyday existence. Neuroscience did not exist a hundred years ago. In the past few years, neuroscience has become a thriving discipline and has begun to provide biological explanations for every aspect of behavior. Understanding the mechanics of the brain function can illuminate our daily lives and what it means to be an individual person. To help us understand this, uh, we will briefly look at the brain. It looks like a single structure, but it's composed of many regions. We will learn about specific brain regions that seem to be involved in generating behaviors, things that we experience in our everyday lives. In this course, we will talk about low and high levels of functioning, always in the terms of everyday life. We will look at emotional processing and memory. We will look at unusual phenomena, such as out-of-body experiences and paranormal experiences. I hope you enjoy this course. Once again, this is Bruce Porter.